morning, art students. Today is Monday, so it is your day for special area. And I'm Miss Hart. This is Art with Miss Hart. So today we are going to have our first day in our virtual art room, creating artwork. I like to begin the year, like every year before, with reading one of my favorite books, Beautiful Oops by Barney Salzberg. So I'm going to read it to you today. Let's see here, let me pull that up. Here we are. Beautiful Oops by Barney Salzberg. I like this book because it takes mistakes and turns them into beautiful things. Beautiful oops. Oops, a torn piece of paper. Is just the beginning. Looks like a little crocodile mouth. Every spill. Uh oh. Has lots. Looks like a little family of dogs. And lots. Another family of birds. possibilities. There are many things you could have turned that into. Bent paper. Uh oh. Is something to celebrate. It's a little penguin head. A little drip of paint lets your imagination run wild. And there looked like a pig, and those two look like two wheels. A scrap of paper, oops, can be fun to play with. Smudge and a smear. Oops. This happens a lot in art. I've had to get on my elbow and make magic appear. A stain has potential if you play with its shape. It looks like a frog. Or Pac-Man. Holes in your paper. And there's a little hole there. Are worth Exploring. This is my favorite part. And if you look down inside there, it says, see, and there's a little bug in there. When you think you have made a mistake, oops. Think of it as an opportunity to make something beautiful. And there's all the animals that were created from mistakes, spills, tears, smears, smudges, 
all those things turned into beautiful art. Beautiful oops. I thought they did a great job reading it and going through each page slowly so you could see all the wonderful things. Okay, so let's, we're gonna go back to our imaginary worlds now. Let's see, that's where we left off. Here we go. So I want you to continue to think of beautiful oops and how you can turn mistakes into beautiful things as we start this first project together, imaginary world drawing. For today, you only need a paper, a pencil, and maybe an eraser. Colored pencils, markers, and crayons will be used when we come back to add color to our piece. Our I can statements for this project are, I can define horizon line, and I can draw a world that demonstrates how things become smaller as they approach the horizon line. So let's talk about horizon lines first. What do you already know? What happens to the appearance of things as they are farther away from us? Think about when you're in a car and you look down a road far, far, far away at that very, very last car and compare it to the car that's closest to us. How does the appearance of that car change as it gets farther away from us? Think about it. You said that things appear smaller and smaller in size as they get farther and farther away. You are correct. So in our pieces, I have some requirements that you show me that you understand the I can statement by drawing things smaller as they get farther away. Let's talk more in depth about that. So horizon line is the line that separates the sky from the land below whether the land is flat or a hill or mountain or even a volcano or even water. As things get closer to the horizon line, they should be smaller in size because they're farther away. So you must draw them to appear smaller as well. You must also have a road or a path to demonstrate your understanding of horizon lines and that things get farther away, they get smaller. By making that road, path, or maybe it's a river or creek, disappear to one dot on the horizon line. Since the horizon line is so far, far away, you do not draw things on that horizon line. So you wouldn't put a house right here, for instance. It must be on the ground below, not flying in the sky above. So you're gonna create your own imaginary worlds, and I'm going to require that you have a horizon line, some characters that you make up that get smaller as they get farther away and approach that horizon line. And then you can choose a road, a path, a river that meets at one single dot, one point on that horizon line because it's so far away that all you can make out is that one single dot where it's disappearing into the horizon. Here are some examples from last year. These are all third grade art students work. We have Looks like toast people that get smaller and smaller as they get farther away. The horizon line and a road or path that disappears to one point. All the things required. Whatever else this student decides to add as they continue, it's up to them. Here's another. One path that disappears to one dot, a horizon line, and things that are getting farther and farther away, so they're also getting smaller. Here's some more. Please don't start with color yet. I have some requirements for when you're adding color that we'll get to next time. Fill your pages with marvelous details and things. We talked about having to have a horizon line, characters and a road. Use your imagination. It's your world. It could be whatever you want it to be. So don't create a world that already exists or use characters that someone else already created. You can create an underwater world. However, you cannot create a world that has a pineapple for a house and a sponge that lives in it because that's already been created. His name is SpongeBob SquarePants. So come up with your own characters. 
Today we're just starting with pencil and paper. Take your time to draw. There should be no stick men and also there is no need to label anything either. So no words. Do not label and tell me by drawing everything that this is a house or this is a dog. I'll be able to tell, I'm sure. And the more details you add, the better it will be at telling what those things are. For instance, on your house, maybe have some windows, doorknobs, curtains, have clothes on your characters, clothes with pockets, etc. All those little things that you add, all those details, make it come to life. It makes it easier to tell what you're drawing. So there should be no violence in your drawing either. Violence is not permitted at school, so no guns or weapons of any kind, nobody fighting. The next week that we meet, we will review what we learned and we'll begin adding color. You'll have time to draw still as well if you're still working on your drawing. Um, and I will give you instruction on my expectations for coloring. I want to show you just a couple more ideas to help you think about what kind of characters you could have. Um, I'm hoping that they show up pretty well. This is a world that is filled with fast food type items. You have Happy Meal houses, the golden arches over here is the sun, and the characters are getting smaller and smaller as they get farther away. Maybe this is a chocolate milk river. It doesn't have color yet. These are just ones that students have thought of over the years that I have drawn. In the pictures, you can see the art students have really large paper, but if you don't have that regular paper, printer paper is fine as well. In this world, here it's so hot, there's three volcanoes. It's a world for chili peppers and they live in salsa jars. This is the jelly bean world where the jelly beans live in candy jars. We have had some spooky Halloween type worlds where they live in witch hats and their little ghost characters and little ghosts flying in the sky. We've had some that are out of this world. Alien type creatures. Nobody really knows what aliens look like, so you can make them to be however you want. They have, live in these glass dome type houses and there's different planets in the sky. Alligator world. Alligators like it really hot. So there's two suns in this world and lots of hills on the horizon line and a volcano. Here is a horse world and they live in cowboy hats. And the horses walk on their feet just like people do. A world of bright ideas. So we have light bulb people who live in lamps and even the cloud has a pull string to turn on and off like a light bulb or a lamp. And because it is an imaginary world, I can have characters that fly if I want to also because it's, it's my imagination. Whatever you come up with with your imagination, feel free to include in your imaginary worlds and I can't wait to see what you have come up with. So um, by the time we finish this project, you'll have created an imaginary world. We'll also be adding color. And then I will post a way that I would expect you to show me what you've come up with. I haven't decided yet, so you'll stay tuned for that. Um, it might be a Flipgrid response, or it might be simply um, sending me a picture of it or putting it on the Art with Miss Hart page. So we'll see how our responses start coming in with our other flip grid projects and, and we might use it that way. Have fun and I look forward to seeing your creations.